What's up, guys? I am Caleb Giddings. Keith didn't step on the intro this time, so I'm having a great, great start to this episode. Let's go. Hi, I'm Keith. I didn't mess this up. I'm Jack, <laughs> and I'm pretty much always good. Fair <laughs> enough. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today's episode is brought to you as per the huge by Taurus USA and Guns.com. If you'd like to buy the fine firearms made by Taurus USA, you can go to Guns.com and do that. They ship straight to your FFL. You go, you fill out a little paperwork, you pay them some money, you buy a box of ammo because they make better margins on ammo than they do on guns, and then you walk out the door, and it's fantastic. Uh, I should point out, if you're an FFL dealer and you don't like doing transfers, you're dumb because you make 100% margin on a transfer. Anyway, yeah. moving on to today's episode. So last week we talked about um, CNR, Curio and Relics. And that got me thinking uh, about like, there was a whole era of gunfighters before we had Glocks and Berettas and, you know, what we kind of think of as high quality modern semi-autos. So to frame out this question, it's 1975. You are a cop you're a, a security guard that's protecting some sort of high risk asset like you know back hold up back then they robbed armored trucks like on the reg so oh, no 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 i wasn't saying that security guards didn't need good guns i was saying that's just not the side of things i would be right. on or your no. jack and your rocket this is before I'm... fingerprinting is not that great back then guys you drop me into 1975 i'm gonna be running harlem in two days <laughs> Do you ever wonder, as a side note, like, especially, like, really in the olden days, like the 1800s, how they ever caught criminals? Did people just, like, walk up and be like, hey, I did some crimes, and then they got arrested? Like, I, so I can, I can, I, I think they did a lot of crime, and then eventually one got them. <laughs> yeah. The thing that caught criminals back then is actually the thing that catches criminals now. Word of mouth. DNA, fingerprinting, things like that. That is about convicting a person of a crime. Evidence. Conviction and catching are two very different things. Fair point. And they're both, they both equally represent the people in matters of law enforcement. <laughs> two separate but equal groups. The police who enforce the laws and the prosecutors. Do you know that whole thing them. by heart? I watched a lot of fucking Law and Order SVU. Oh, my um, God. Okay, so. Yeah, it's all investigated. 90% yeah. of catching a person is somebody talks to somebody, you start putting stuff together, and I will say they're really great investigators, and they're really bad investigators, and the type of investigation all comes down to um, how they do their job, and if you want the best explanation for what is a natural-born investigator, go watch Wire Season 1. They show it. Yeah, they show guys who are bad at the job, they show guys who are okay at the job, they show guys who are great at the job, and how they do it. And I it's also some of the best television that's ever been made. Guys, Agreed. they're not gonna be making good television for a while. So go watch some old stuff. Hey, I hope you guys like really crappy reality shows because that's what we're getting for the next two years. That's uh, what you're getting. I'm watching the Sopranos. Yeah, I'm just watching reruns. <laughs> uh, th so this is so uh yeah, we could let's not talk about the writer's strike because people are how or the actor strike or whichever people are striking, because then we'll get weird comments. And I don't want weird comments. I want well, I want weird comments, but I want weird comments from our listeners about nor other I'm stuff we it. talk about. So it's 1975. <laughs> you are plotting an armored truck heist if you're Jack, or you're guarding the armored truck, or you're a cop, or whatever. And what is the best duty gun of the era? And I, I, I've, I've been thinking about this question for a hot minute because your options are not great. I mean, well, let me and, phrase and that. And if you're like, of course they are. There's the CC-75. Sorry, that started production in 1976. That's yeah, out. Get, get out. I, I specifically <laughs> picked 1975 to avoid any high-quality DASA guns. Uh, well, and now somebody's going to be like, but the Walther P1. Okay, that can be your choice, and you're wrong. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So I will – here's my choice, and this isn't going to surprise – a single living soul that listens to this show, it's a revolver. Specifically, it is a revolver that started production in 1975 and is the Ruger Security 6. And I would get a Security 6 
with a four inch barrel and I would have uh, Davis gun shop, Davis gun works or gun shop in Sacramento, California, do an action job on that gun. And I would carry that thing with the FBI load, 158 grain lead semi wad cutter hollow points. And that would be it. That's my gun. I'd get a friggin' belt full of Safari land comp twos. Cause those shits existed back then. And I'm done. I am. I'm done. I have my duty gun. I have a gun that will last me an entire lifetime. It will put bullets right where I want them. And if it was good enough for Uncle Pat to fucking kill guys with in New York, then it is good enough for me. <laughs> Tell me Sorry. I'm wrong. I, I that was a, that that's an appeal. By the way, the Uncle Pat reference is an appeal to authority, and I'm not even ashamed of it. Uh, it's not a wrong appeal to authority. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's not wrong. It's not wrong. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, um, I, I don't agree with you. It's not wrong, but I don't agree with you. You see, I wake up in my flop house at the crack of noon, roll over, press check my, my five inch 1911, holster that into my shoulder rig. Of course. That I haven't stopped wearing since the night before. Then I should have this out. Get dressed. Pick up my Browning High Power, slide that into the front of my pants with no holster, throw on a Hawaiian shirt, get into my Corvette, and drive... Oh, that Corvette only has 300 horsepower. I do not care. Drive directly to the gun store, walk in with all intents and purposes of... Per, you know, purpose to buy a couple of shotguns to cut down for reasons yet to be mentioned... And lay my eyes upon the Sig Sauer P220 that has just come out this year. Oh. An amazing <laughs> offering of an all steel framed, double action, single action, 45 caliber handgun with good sights, a great trigger, and now I no longer have to carry two guns. And I throw those bad boys into a into a green army duffel. Pick up my SIG 220, slide it into my Galco Combat Master holster. That I don't think that was out at the time, but in my head, I still have one. Uh, two spare magazines on the opposite side of the belt and pick up a Smith & Wesson Model 19 Snubby for the ankle rig, and I'm just going to call it a day from there. <laughs> the P220, a curse, a curse on SIG Sauer's name. Uh, oh. Jack, took my, Jack took my SIG. Yeah. <laughs> my SIG from me. <laughs> I, I googled uh, what guns came out in 1975. In 1975? Yeah, I forgot was, about that one. Oh, I saw it on the list. I was like, he doesn't know the answer. Is right uh, but there are a lot of great options. Yeah. I mean, there were there were solidly built handguns back in the day. And in the, the 220 is an excellent example of the design. The high power is a good example of the design. Um, even, the, even 1911s, as long as you got that thing working, it was a good example of the design of what you know, stuff was capable of at the, that point in time. Um, you know what's crazy is this was... So I'm, I'm just going to go get a full auto M16 because it's not 1984 yet. And I <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is the time before the Gun Control Act of 86. Uh, <laughs> go buy so machine guns. Yeah, if you're talking like... Bolt and enjoy life with my seven pound full auto in 5.56. If you're talking about like, what is the loadout for 1975 for me? It is 100% the SIG 220 and an Uzi. All right, all right, uh, Keith. What's your loadout? All right, so you can have Jack's two twenty. Give me yep. your, give me your rifle too. Yeah, it, it's it's going to be the two twenty and definitely uh, a a Colt's uh, six hundred one select fire. <laughs> good old good old twenty inch M sixteen. Going to go do some work with that. You really do that when you could get a Beretta AR seventy? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, I do. A full auto AR seventy. It, uh, it's, actually, it's you know, good either I'm, way, man. It really, it's if, good either way. But I'm, if I'm, I'm if, mm. if I'm doing rifles, AR AR eighteen. Oh, uh -huh. dude, uh -huh. AR eighteen with that forty round magazine in it, because like me little Armalite. Roll up on me. Armalite. The Armalite. Oh, the AR-18. All right. So we've got that. I'm, I'm looking at really? stuff that kind of came out through the era. Uh, and oh, big no, shout not, not quite. Big shout outs to the Ithaca 37. The FNC. That, that, was, uh, that was a little later. 
Um, so can't do an FNC. Oh, but you could do an HK41 because that came out in 64. Oh, that one's good too. I've shot that one. Uh, no, I think, you know, as I mean, transferable machine guns, uh, if I'm carrying a wheel gun, I'm going to want firepower and volume. I'm getting a, an MP5 as my long gun. Like, that's the that's one. Another, another that's good one. Like, so I'm rocking an MP5, but it has no stock on it, and I'm shooting it pressed out <laughs> against the sling. <laughs> oh. I, just, I feel like I feel like the MP5, it was out in 1975. No, but yeah. I feel like you're, you're like it's not as culturally cool then yet. You're way ahead of it. Yeah, I'm I'm <laughs> if I'm rocking a, a suppressed MP5 uh with no stock shooting it pressed out against the sling in 1975 i am setting the trend i am on the fucking cutting edge of cool right, guns. like you're in you're in hereford at the time like, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's actually probably true when you think about it you're either you're, in, you're the guy yeah, you're you're there you're, you're either the, you're either there or you're in damn funny Virginia, accents so there. and big moose um and big shotguns Remington eleven hundred, oh, I think, yeah. at the same time period. Isaac of thirty seven. Oh, we got the eight just seventy. Chopped. Just chopped. Oh god, yeah, the I... chopped Ithaca thirty seven. Which the first time you pick up an Ithaca thirty seven, you feel like someone's playing a trick on you. Because mm -hmm. you're like, the... hold on, wait a second. Where do you? Oh, oh it all comes from one spot. <laughs> Uh, I will say this if we are, you know, I eject from there. No, <laughs> not right now. You don't wrong. Hole. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, I will say this. If you want, if I wanted to carry a submachine gun, that was actually cool at the time, because again, that MP5 would have been ahead of the thing. Mac 10. I have a lot of fun memories with the Mac 10. I do too. I had a Mac 10. I had a full rock and roll Mac 10. And I tell you, that gun is completely uncontrollable. It's fully automatic fire. <laughs> yeah. It was been... meant to be controllable. It was meant to make the noise and the happy. It does. Well, oh, it was meant to surprise a room full of kernels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or See, that would yeah, make the noise much. and the happy. Mm -hmm. Not for the kernels, but. It's, yeah. Oh, man. I should buy a Mac 10. Um, oh, you know what I could get? Okay, I've got my loadout because they were available and transferable. An M2 carbine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Solid. Yeah. Great option. An M2 carbine and a 38 special revolver. Holy Fuck, I'd carry that tomorrow. Are you oh, kidding yeah, me? Oh, yeah, do that work. That, like, yes. Oh, what a great choice that would be. Can we see a comeback to 30 carbine? Like, Right? That is a cartridge that well, because we're doing all of these like straight wall heavy magnum cartridges, and I'm mm -hmm. all, let's make you know what? Hang on, dear Brett, that's my boss at Taurus. In case you guys didn't know, we should make a thirty carbine revolver on the Raging Hunter platform. Oh man, that would that would slap. That would be really cool. Like that with that ten inch <laughs> ten inch barrel that we've got. Yeah. yeah. That would be dope. And then what we should do is we should take one of our uh, we so we just released this new gun, the the Rossi Brawler, right? So it's a single shot, uh, that sort of thing. We should make one of those in thirty carbine, but with like a, a eleven inch barrel and a stock, and thread that barrel for a can. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, like I got these ideas, and they're all great. And four people would buy these guns, but anyway. So we've all just those four people will have a great time with them. Three of them are in this chat. Yeah, absolutely. And, then, you know, and we know the other ones. So this is one of the problems, right? Like we were like, oh, this gun would be so cool. The three of us all would us. and then we would know and we know the other seven people. Like we're just yeah. we have a distro list. We're like, hey, you had a crazy idea again. <laughs> hey, hey, have made the niche gun you guys want. Oh, man. So the last thing we're going to talk about is completely unrelated to this, but I've been thinking about this um, and I wanted to talk to you guys about it because, you know, as everybody knows, uh, you know, first off, all of our 1975 loadouts are fire. 1975 guns and oh, we're all and like if you're like a cop or a guard, you're wearing like knee high boots, even though you're not on the motorcycle squad with a fucking leather jacket. And you look Ugh. amazing. Oh, and you've got fucking fingerless leather gloves and you look like you're ready to fuck someone's day up because you are a whole 
whole vibe to that whole thing. And your back pocket has a sap in it that you only ever hit people with the edge of, not the flat part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Anyway. We here at Gunday Brunch do not condone 1970s cop beatings. <laughs> no, not at all. We, we value all of your civil rights. Every last one of them. They're all very important. Every single one of them. Uh, so, but here's we will have ever laugh about the non 1975 thing that I wanted to talk about because that's been on my mind is you know every uh every firearms brand influencer community you know you're shadow banned on Instagram now right your content goes against their recommended content guidelines and can only be shown to your uh you know to your followers um I remember a time point of order yes my clients aren't your clients aren't. I know, and there is, there are ways to manage that. There are things you can do to get around it. Uh, if you would like to pay Jack money to not have to deal with that, fantastic. I think you should. They got marketing money, which yeah, market Jack. gives me the money, <laughs> right? So anyway, um, what? But I also am old enough to remember a time when we didn't have an algorithm to recommend content. Like everybody here in this chat remembers Follow Fridays on Twitter, right? Yes. Now, I'm not saying we should bring Follow Fridays back because that's kind of cringy. But if you are a medium or any size content creator, take time out of your content creation schedule to recommend other accounts that you follow. Post their ads, post their handles, do that so that because your followers will see those posts and they may not follow this other account. So if there's something, so we need to, you know, at, I hate to say as a community, but as a community, we need to get back to a place of recommending other people's content. And I want people to understand that success as a content creator is not a zero sum game. If you have success or someone else has success, they are not taking bites of the success pie that you can never get okay it is not as you can make a much bigger pie it's the the pie is the pie is so big all right there's there's what 10 million gun owners in the united states okay if you have ten thousand followers and you recommend another account i guarantee that that other account will be like oh thanks i picked up five or ten or fifteen followers from it you know which is Tough to do if you're not paying a company like Gap Marketing to help you not be shadow banned. Um, but that's kind of where we're at with organic growth in the firearm space right now. Is you you, you can to... see it in other spaces. You see it work in other spaces. Mm -hmm. I follow a lot of I, I follow a lot of like movie review spaces and you know TV show review spaces, and these guys shout each other out all the time just because that's... they they're they're kind of they're kind of in the same space they they work well with each other they don't all, it's not like a hive mind where they all agree on the same thing but they're all working in the same space and they're working together and they they get together have discussions and you have guys who have no following get boosted very strongly because they interact positively in the space they don't necessarily agree on everything but they interact positively in the space they get the shout out and away it goes. And then all of a sudden they have a strong channel, strong following. We need to get back to doing that here. I'll, I'll say this. Um, I, for one, um, I, I recommend Threat Llama and Rebels Raiders on and CBR, CBRN Art. Those three accounts on Instagram are fantastic accounts. Some are really humorous. They all do great artwork. And Sometimes there's good information, but mostly I just get a good chuckle out of them. Yeah. CBRN is mostly good information, but the other two are chuckle factories that are absolutely worth following. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, today, so for you guys, obviously, so it's a Friday that we're recording this. I'm going to finish this, and I'm going to do a reel, and I'm going to recommend one account. Just because I don't, what I don't want to do is I don't want to be like, all right, here's 28 accounts for you to follow. Here's one account that you may or may not follow. Here's why I follow them. Here's why I like them. And you should go follow them too. And if you don't, okay. If you do, fantastic. That makes everybody's day better. Uh, and with that, I think we've all had a grand day. So I think that's a, a wrap on this episode. What I would love from you guys though, post your 1975 loadouts in the comments. All right. Guns, long guns, what round are and, you and carrying? Me, you, you can do two guys. Do a practical one and then just wild out with one. Go yeah. Yes. Your 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 wild out loadout and your practical loadout. I mean, my you know, uh, 
yeah, just post that in the comments and uh, thank you. That definitely has a cult monitor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, I saw that the FN Mini Me came out in 1975, and I'm like, how can I get a transferable 249? Um, <laughs> So anyway, guys, that is it for uh, that's it for this week's episode. Thank you, everyone, for liking, sharing, subscribing. Make sure you hit that notification bell on YouTube to get notified when a new episode drops. Uh, someone said that I should do these bumps at the start of the episode, but I'm not going to because that is cringe. And if you're listening to us on iTunes or Spotify, please go ahead and leave us a five-star review. Helps boost us up in that algorithm because we haven't been shadow banned there yet. That's it. Talk to you guys next week.